Remember 13 months ago when it looked like Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Texas, Texas Tech, and Texas A&M would all vault the Big 12 to join the Pac-10? But thanks to Big 12 Commissioner and BB, who made a TV contract offer that the teams just couldn't refuse, including allowing Texas to have their own television network, those Big 12 schools towed the Pac-10. Thanks, but no thanks for staying put. So what looked like was going to be the Pac-16 conference is now the Pac-12. Thanks to the additions, though, of uh, Utah and Colorado. Talk about those teams in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about the Pac-12 Northern Division. Clearly, Oregon and Stanford are the juggernauts in this division. Both have a lot in common. Both teams lost just a game last season. And in the case of Oregon, they lost in heartbreak fashion to Auburn for the national title. Both, however, returned their quarterbacks. Oregon has Darren Thomas back. Stanford has Andrew Luck, the Heisman finals from a year ago. Both also returned loaded backfields for Oregon, LaMichael James, also a Heisman finalist from last season, along with a very versatile Kenyon Barner who can play multiple positions. Stanford will also have a loaded backfield with Stephon Taylor as well as Anthony Wilkerson, just a sophomore. And both have to address issues, though, as far as receiving court and offensive and defensive lines. They have holes to fill there. Although in Oregon's case, on the defensive front, they played a lot of players last season, had a deep rotation, so they'll at least have some players on the defensive line who did see some experience last season. Both have some marquee players on the defensive side, too. In the case of Stanford, the uh, player that got a lot of mention last year, especially in the Orange Bowl against Virginia Tech, Shane Scove. He's back, and for Oregon, they return a couple of very talented defensive backs in the form of John Boyett at safety and at corner, Cliff Harris, who could be All-American. Problem with Harris, though, the guy was caught going over 115 miles per hour in a speeding incident earlier. So he suspended indefinitely. We'll miss the LSU game at the beginning of the season. That's a marquee game because LSU, like Oregon, will be highly ranked. It's going to be a home slanted game for LSU playing not too far from Baton Rouge, that game in Arlington, Texas. The loss of Cliff Harris is enormous for Oregon, not only because he's a terrific defensive player, but also a special teams weapon as well. I look for LSU to win that game, but I look for Oregon to still have a real good year, and I look for them to beat Stanford on November the 12th in that big matchup in Palo Alto. The big reason, coaching experience. Chip Kelly has won 22 games in just his first two years with the Ducks, and it just seemed like during his time there, they're able to plug in new players that really are developing fine, so they're able to overcome the losses of graduated players. Some teams can't do that, but Oregon has seemed to do it, and that's why the Ducks remain a contender nationally. David Shaw, the new head coach at Stanford after Jim Harbaugh, left to go to the San Francisco 49ers to head coach their team and took his defensive coordinator with him. Shaw now will inherit a talented team, but he's not proven as a head coach, never been a head coach before. So I give the coaching edge to Chip Kelly and Oregon. Even though I know the game's in Palo Alto, I think the Ducks will win the game. Now, the other teams in the Pac-12 North, you have to look at Oregon State, a team that last year, disappointing, missed out on a bowl game, and Jacquez Rogers, they're everything running back left early for the NFL. Ryan Katz, the quarterback, does return for the Beavers, but now who will be the running back? Probably will be Jacquez's brother, uh, James Rogers. Rogers has to recover from a knee injury. He suffered the latter part of 2010. Oregon State, because of the fact that Katz is back and that James Rogers has the capability of being every bit as good as his brother, that might be a stretch, but Rodgers is that good when he's healthy, um, that could keep Oregon State's offense on a high level. But they have to replace seven defensive starters, so I look for Oregon State to probably be about a six, maybe seven-win squad this year. Washington last year won seven games, including winning the Holiday Bowl in shocking fashion over Nebraska. But the Huskies have to replace the QB and Jake Locker, but Chris Polk does return at running back for the Huskies. About half of the uh, defensive starters are back for Washington, but the schedule is too brutal for UW to compete on a high level. Playing at Nebraska, at Utah, at Oregon State, at Stanford, and hosting USC and Oregon, good luck Washington trying to get back to a bowl game with that slate. The Cal Golden Bears last season 
Only five victories. Good defensively, ranked in the top 20 in defense, but offensively was very stagnant. And the heat is on this year for veteran coach Jeff Tedford to get them back into bowl contention. Um, the receiving core for Cal looks good, led by Marvin Jones. But quarterback play has to get better, and they also have to replace the backfield. So I think for Cal, it's going to be borderline if they can get to those six victories. I think they'll finish somewhere around fourth or fifth in the Northern Division. And Washington State last year, pathetic. Yeah, that might be a kind word. They were just flat-out embarrassing, only averaging 19 points a game. The Cougars gave up 36 points per contest as well. The quarterback does return, though, in Jeff Toole. But for head coach Paul Wolf, he could be crying wolf at the end of the season. He's only won five games in his three years in Pullman. Now let's look at the Pac-12 South and USC. Their explosive offense is back. Matt Barkley had a good year in 2010. He returns. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. Also back, they'll have Mark Tyler at running back. And Robert Woods, who was a stud last season at wide receiver as just a freshman, now returns for his sophomore year. USC will score points. Last year, though, they gave up too many, about four touchdowns a game and 400 yards per contest. Other than T.J. McDonald, the safety, USC does not have a lot of marquee players on the defensive side. In fact, that might be the only marquee player is McDonald. So USC, to state the obvious, has to get better defensively if they want to have a 9 or 10 win season. Defense really held them back last year. That area is going to be very much focused on this year. No matter what happens for USC, though, they cannot go to a bowl game or play in the Pac-12 championship game because of probation, which prohibits them from doing so. Looking at Arizona, they went 7-1 at one point during the 2010 campaign, then hit a wall hard, lost their last five, and this year's forecast, despite the fact that Nick Foles returns a QB for the Wildcats, doesn't look very good. Because the ground game is going to be new, they could be without their uh, best receiver, and, and uh, Jerron Kreiner, he's got personal issues right now, so he may be a no-show for this season. Plus, all the offensive linemen have to be replaced, and you have to replace a lot of defensive players. And the schedule at the beginning of the year, which will be games at Oklahoma State, they'll also have the likes of Oregon, Stanford, and USC, and at Oregon State to deal with. Arizona, I don't think, can survive the first half of that schedule. It could be a long year for Mike Stoops' squad. The Colorado Buffaloes, they know what long years are like because they haven't done much in a while. They have a new head coach, though, in John Embry, and at least a good offensive line. But they have to do better passing the football and play better on the defensive side. Colorado's schedule, I'll tell you what, the devil must have made it because they play 13 games, no bye weeks, and only five of those games are in Boulder, and they have to play both Stanford and Oregon from the North Division. Colorado looks like they're going to finish every bit of uh, last place, but look for Rodney Stewart, though, and the ground game for Colorado to at least play well. Passing game, though, with Tyler Hansen, he has to get better. The Utah Utes last year went 10-3, and but they're going to find out that the Pac-12 is a much tougher league than that of the Mountain West Conference, which they came from. The quarterback returns in Jordan Wynn, but on the defensive side, they have to replace every member of the secondary. They'll have four new starters there. Utah at least gets Stanford and Oregon omitted from the schedule, and they get Arizona State at home. But because it is a pass-happy conference, I don't look for Utah to have much success on the defensive side. They're going to have to win in high-scoring fashion in just about every game they play. And taking a look at UCLA, this is a team that I really think um, – Faces a big year because Rick Neuheisel has not delivered much for them. They won only four games last year. Their passing attack was one of the worst in the country. They at least returned their running back, though, in Jonathan Franklin, 1,000-yard rusher, and the quarterback returns in Kevin Prince. But even Prince has to really do his part because, again, UCLA's passing attack was bad. How bad? Well, they ran for more yards than they did throw in a pass-happy conference. That's not a formula for success. And on the defensive side, uh, they were plagued all season long. So UCLA will find out early on how good they are with a road game against Houston and then two weeks later hosting Texas and what the Longhorns I've got to think is a revenge game for them after what UCLA did in Austin a season ago. Arizona State's my pick to represent the Pac-12 South because USC can't go to the Pac-12 game. I think Arizona State will. 
They have 15 starters back, including eight on the offensive side of the ball. Cameron Marshall, very talented running back. He returns. Seven defensive starters are back for ASU. A big year for Dennis Erickson. I think this team is capable of winning about eight ball games this season. Um, they do have to play at Oregon. That's going to be a loss. But the rest of the schedule, I think, is fairly reasonable for this team. They've got the game at Utah. But... Um, this is a team that I believe dodges Stanford on the schedule and they get USC at home. So I look for Arizona State to represent the South in the Pac-12. And I look for them, however, to fall short against Oregon for the Pac-12 championship game. And remember, the division champ who has the best record gets to host the conference title game. That will be Oregon. And I look for Oregon to go 11-1 and go to a BCS game for the third straight season. That's my look at the Pac-12. We'll talk Big Ten football on my next show.